I have a new 3D printer from Longer. In a previous video we took a look at the LK4 and now we have yet another review on the LK5 Pro version, also from Longer. As always I will tell you the main specs, what I like and what I don't, what you receive with this kit, assemble it and make a few tests with different materials. In this way I hope that this video will give you a general idea about this printer in case that you're looking to buy one. So guys, let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. We open the package and we receive as always the printer pretty much 90% already assembled. We have the bottom metal case with the printing bed and on the other side we have the top main part of the frame. Connected to the bottom case is the x-axis with the nozzle block. And the side of that we have the lid screw and two rods for support. We have the LCD screen with the warning message for the supply. We also have some cables, the spool holder, some plastic bags with screws, the SD card and spare parts, a print removing tool, the assembly guide and pretty much that's it. This is all that you receive with this kit. As for the assemble process it took me just 5 minutes. First we slide the x-axis on the top part of the printer. Then we add the step motor and just after that we slide the lid screw and tighten it in place. Then we connect the top part together with the bottom metal case and we add 4 screws on the bottom. And finally we add those rods for support from the top corners of the printer to the bottom corners. Then rotate these rods and tie the screws. We then add the spool holder on one side. After that we add the LCD display on the other side. We place this end stop for the z-axis. Remove the film from the glass and place it on top of the heated bed and add the clips. All is left is to connect all the connectors, which by the way, they all have labels, so we know for sure where to connect each one. So guys, that's it. Make sure that the supply is for the voltage in your country, remove the label from the LCD screen and plug in the power cable. The printer starts and we can make a test. You get an SD card with this kit, where you will find a software and some printing examples. So preheat the printer, get some PLA filament, Insert it into the extruder till you can see some filament that is getting out from the nozzle. Then insert the SD card, select the example and press print. So while the printer is doing its job, let me tell you about the specs of this product and then we can see the results for different prints and materials. First of all, the printing volume is of 300 by 300 mm for the X and Y. The maximum printing height is of 400 mm. For the Z-axis this model is using just one lead screw on one side, and I hope that is enough, because this is a quite big printer. As for the controller, just as any other 2021 printers, is using the TMC silent stepper drivers. In this way the printer is very silent, and all you can hear is the cooling fan for the electronics case. Inside this case everything is well organized and all the cables are insulated for safety. We also have a fuse inside of the main switch. The power supply is 24 volts as usual for more power for the heated bed. And the main board is the same as for the LK4 model from the previous review. The entire printer is made out of metal and it's quite stiff, especially with the supporting rods. The heated bed is very stable. And if you want you can print on the glass surface, or if you flip it, you can print on this texture so the print will stick better when the glass is heated. What I really like is that they finally use this kind of material to cover the cables. Because as you remember for the LK4 model, they had those nasty plastic covers that were very hard to bend and also made a lot of noise. As you can see here we have the same exact cover for the wires on the back and sometimes it will get stuck here because it's very hard and it won't bend and also it sounds awful, 
So what I really like I've seen on other printers is some kind of fabric on top of the wires and that looks a lot better. But this material is a lot more elegant, right? Ok, so the printer has one extruder and the default nozzle is of 0.4mm. It uses a Bowden extruder that is placed here on the side of the x-axis. At the input of the extruder it has a filament detector, so it will pause the print when you run out of filament. For this model we have this blue Bowden tube which is advertised to be better. What I've noticed is that the inner diameter is a little bit tighter and that could be good but also create more friction. The printer also has the power down resume function, so if you power down the printer by mistake or if you unplug it, when you power it back on, you will have a message on the display to resume the last print, so it will heat up again and continue from the last spot. As for the display is the same as the LK4 model, and that is a touchscreen display of 4.3 inches. The menu is straightforward, and the touchscreen is quite responsive. You can level the bed, preheat the material, move the axis or print from the SD card. Basically this is pretty much the same as the LK4 model but with small improvements and a bigger body, so bigger prints, and also these rods for support. Ok, so now let's see some prints. For that we preheat the printer for PLA, ABS or any other material. Insert the SD card and from the menu we go to print, files and select any G code. My first print was the Banshee. I printed this with multicolor PLA. The print turned out ok but this is nothing special. We have decent layers, no loose filaments and good overall results. Next example with PLA was this vase and this was also on the SD card so it was printed with their default settings. In this case the results were near perfect because a round model like this doesn't have too many strange movements, because everything is printed in a circular movement. The print turned out great with 0.2mm layer height and 2 parameters and this color gradient gives this an even better look. Ok, so for PLA I've made a few more prints. One is this starship design, this dragon and this Mandalorian statue. So let's start with the starship. This was printed with blue PLA material with 0.2mm layer height, 3 perimeters and 20% infill. It also needs supports for the fins which is very easy to remove, just a small push and is out. The print also turned out great with good details, nice layers and no errors. I think that I will paint this with some metallic spray paint and keep this on my desk because it looks so cool. Till now everything is ok. The dragon was also printed with that multicolor PLA material and once again with 0.2mm layer height, 2 perimeters and 15% infill. This time this was printed at 85mm per second for the printing speed, but even so it took me around 15 hours to finish, because as you can see this is quite big. Now the layers for this print are perfect. Yes we have some small errors here on the dragon belly, but that's due to printing in mid air, but the rest I could say it turned out pretty good. There is no ghosting effect, no loose filaments or any other major error. With PLA I've also printed this Mandalorian statue and this whistle example that's also on the SD card. And that's pretty much all I've done with PLA and for now I'm pretty happy with the results. Next was of course ABS. This time I had some problems. The first test with ABS, well it didn't stick well to the printing bed and this happened. The object started to move and the printer was printing in mid air. We all know that printing with ABS is a bit more complicated especially if the printer is not inside of an enclosed case, in order to keep a hot and stable temperature. So next I've added some hairspray on the bed and printed another ABS test cube. This time the cube was printed ok, but we can see some red layers. For this print the bed was at 90 degrees and the nozzle at 240 degrees. It's quite usual for ABS to have some red layers. 
So finally the last ABS test was the same, but this time with the layer height set to 0.18mm instead of 0.2. This time the results were a lot better, so basically tweaking a little bit of settings we can print ABS as well. The next print was using flexible material. So I've tried this several times at very low speeds as I usually do. But as I told you before, this new Teflon tube is presenting some resistance, so each time this happened. There is not enough force to push the filament, so it got wrapped on the extruder gear. With the LK4, if you remember, I was able to print flexible as well, but not this time because this new Teflon tube. The final test was made with low temperature nylon. The print turned out great, better than expected. I've printed this frog object with 0.2mm layer height, 2 perimeters and 15% infill as usual. And again the details are great and with nylon, the print should be a bit more resistant to impacts and also more flexible than PLA for some hard working parts. So guys these were all the prints for the LK5 Pro 3D printer. In general I had good results. I know that the new Teflon tube is supposed to be better, but since the diameter is more exact it also creates more friction, so printing with flexible will also be harder. I think that's the only thing that I don't like about this kit. I do like the LK4 model, so because this one is the same but a little bit bigger, I also like it. Metal hard and stable frame, silent steppers, which is probably the best perk of nowadays printers, print resume function, big heated bed with both smooth glass or the rough texture if you flip it, nice control from this big color touchscreen, compact electronics case and with safety measures for the high voltage cables, and overall good prints with different materials. I know that the price is always changing, but you can find some links below and usually is around 290 euros, which for a printer this big and good quality is quite low price. So guys I hope this video made you a general idea about this printer in case that you're looking to buy one. I hope that you like this video and if so give me a like. Maybe also check my previous review on the LK4 model and compare. So thanks again and see you later guys. What's up my friends, so this is the end of this video and I hope that you like it and the most important part as always is that you have learned something new. And as you know, part of the support for this channel comes from Patreon, so I would really like to thank you to all that you are supporting me on Patreon. And if you are not supporting me on Patreon, you have all the links below. And the best that you could do is to just like this video, comment or maybe share this video with your friends in order to beat this YouTube algorithm. So thank you very much once again and I see you in the next video.